Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew and this is another tutorial on integrating Crocoblock plugins with the Bricks Team Builder. This time I'll be explaining the features of the Jet Engine Data Store module which allows users to select and save different website content for later viewing but also has other uses I'll be talking about. It's an extremely useful functionality that was often used for WooCommerce products but can now be applied to custom post types, users, taxonomies and more across various types of websites. Remember to sign up to our channel for more updates and post your questions and reactions under the video. To enable data store functionality in Jet Engine, first navigate to WordPress dashboard and click on the Jet Engine label. In the default module section, locate the data stores toggle and switch it on. Press the save button to apply the changes. After saving, a new section labeled Data Stores will appear in the dashboard menu. Click on it and select New Store to begin configuring your content storage. This will bring up a set of fields where you can define the core settings for your data store. Let's briefly go through all of them. After assigning data store a name and a slug, decide on the store type from these five options. Data is stored as cookies in the user's browser and is temporary. It remains available until the user clears their browser cache or the cookies expire. Data is saved for the duration of user's session and is deleted once they leave or end the session. This option provides temporary storage without saving data permanently on the user's device. User metadata option stores data in the user's profile and is only available for logged in users. The data persists across sessions and is tied to their account accessible from any device. Local storage allows storing data in the user's browser and remains available even after closing the tab or browser. Unlike cookies, it does not expire and is only accessible from the same device and browser. Finally, the data can be linked to user's IP address. This option can be useful for cases where you want to track and store user data without requiring login or saving data directly on the user's browser. The max size field is for inputting how many items users can have stored at a time. It contains zero by default, which means there's no limit. If you want to count and display how many times users add specific posts to their data stores, then you need to enable the count items toggle. There's a brief tutorial on our channel describing how this feature is used to add likes and likes counter to posts, and I'll also be demonstrating one way to implement this feature later in the video. Is user store toggle should be enabled if you want to allow users to save other users' accounts in this store. And the store item on view toggle makes the post appear in the store after the user visits them. This option is for separate recently viewed page or for adding a listing that displays recently viewed posts by a user anywhere on the website. Please note that this functionality is only available for posts and not other content types. If you set a specific number in max size field and the user exceeds the number by adding too many posts, the earliest added post will be deleted for every new post added. Now there are a lot of things you can do with data stores and I want to show you several of them. We'll start with a simple recently viewed layout. Let's name the current table recently viewed data table, leave the store type as cookies, enable the store item on view toggle and select the post type that will be saved in the data store, they're called events in my case. Click the save button and the data table is created. The next essential step is creating a query that will be used to define which posts need to be retrieved in the post listings displaying viewed posts. For this, in the Jet Engine Query Builder, click Add New, create a name for the query to easily identify it later and leave the query type as post query. Scroll down and select Post and Page Settings section. This is where we specify which posts qualify to be seen in the layouts with the custom query. So click the Dynamic Text button next to the Post In top field. Choose the Get Store option, select the data store for the viewed post and hit Apply. Now the custom query is ready, so click the Add Query or Update Query button on the right. Now we'll go to the page that contains a listing grid with event post listings and modify it with the help of bricks. 
Here, the listing grid embedded in a container displays previously created listings with dynamic information from the event post data, using a dynamic image for featured image and dynamic field elements for event title and date. For this quick demonstration, I'm simply going to duplicate the container with the listings. I will also add a heading to clarify that the following are recently viewed posts. In the listing grid settings, I will leave the same listings as the source of data as in the original layout, but of course you can create a different listing for this purpose. I'll change the number of columns to 3, modify the message that will appear when there are no viewed posts to display, and enable the slider layout, as is often used for viewed content. Finally, to make it all work, we have to enable the use of a custom query and select the query we created a few minutes ago. Save the changes to the page and view the results on the front end. Right now there are no posts displayed after the viewed events title. After the posts are viewed, let's reload the page and voila, the posts appear in the recently viewed section. The next data store use case requires creating a button that allows users to manually select content to be saved for later on a separate page. First, let me create a new data store. I'll call it data store 1 and keep all the default settings. Next, I will create custom query 1, where I specify data store 1 to indicate that content sent to this store should be displayed wherever I choose to use listings with this particular query. After these steps are completed, we need to modify the listing for the posts we want users to be able to add to the data store. Instead of creating a new listing from scratch, I'll make a copy of the event listing I used previously and proceed with its modification in Bricks. In the builder, I find and insert the data store button into the listing layout. This element allows adding content to the data store and once clicked, this same element can be used for the reverse action or as a link to where the stored items can be viewed. So in the button's general content settings, we should select the store we want the item sent to. Then we can modify the button label. I'm going to type add to favorites here and add icon to the label too. The reload listing grid on success toggle allows you to input the ID for the listing grid that needs to be reloaded after the action assigned to this button is executed. For now, let's input an easy to remember letter sequence and I'll show you where to use it later. The next set of settings defines what happens to the button after we add the post to the store. The first two options are to transform it into a button that removes the item from the store or to switch its status by integrating a static link or a link contained within any dynamic data on the site. For both of these options, we can change the label and icon to make it easy for users to understand what happens after the button is clicked. The third transformation option for the button is to hide it. I want to choose the switch button status option here and link it to the place where the posts in the store are displayed. I haven't created that place yet, so I'll have to come back to this listing with the link again. Let's perform the styling to make this element look like an actual button and then save the changes to the listing. Let's open the page previously used to demonstrate the recently viewed functionality and modify the listing grid on it by choosing a newly created post listing. On the front end, we can see listings with the Add to Store buttons, which change their look after we click them and the posts are added to favorites. Now we have to create a place on the website where users can go to see posts they select by clicking the Data Store buttons under the listings. This can be done by adding a listing grid connected to the specific data store on any existing pages, just like we did in recently viewed presentation, or on a new page, which is what I'm going to do now. But first, let's create a new listing. 
I'm going to duplicate the events listing I created for users to add posts to their favorites and modify it in Bricks. I want the listing to show one more piece of data from the post, which is a short event description using another dynamic field element. We also have to modify the data store button here, because we don't need a button to add to a data store anymore, we only need it to remove from the store. Right now the button adds posts if they're not added yet or transforms to link users to data store location. If I do everything right, we don't need to cancel the first actions functionality, because we'll only see the posts in favorites when they're added, so the button will always be in its after added mode. I only have to change the after added to store option to remove from the store button, change its label and make any styling changes if I want to. Don't forget that the reload listing grid on success toggle must stay enabled for this listing as well, and the same listing grid ID should be used as in the previous listing. Let's now save and publish the listing, create new page called favorite events and proceed to edit it in Bricks. When we are in the Bricks editor, let's start off by choosing a typical section and container layout, adding a heading and inserting a listing grid element. In the element general settings, choose the last listing that we worked on, type in the message for when there are no posts added and enable the usage of a custom query we created for this data store. Let's check how it looks on the front end. In the listing grid we can see the posts that are added to the relevant store and under each listing there's a remove button. However, as I click on the buttons, the posts are still displayed, this time with an add to favorites button, until we manually reload the page. To display posts in the grid dynamically, we need to use the previously created ID for the reload listing grid functionality. Back in the listing editor, go to the listing grid style options and click the CSS drop down section. Here, insert the ID we used for setting up the listing for the favorite store into the CSS ID field. Save the changes and go to the front end to see how removing the post works this time. Here the posts disappear from the data store right after we click the remove button, as listing grid reload is executed dynamically. While we're here, let's save the data store URL and use it to update the data store button settings in the listings that allow users to add posts to favorites and navigate to favorites page afterwards. This last case is a basic use of data store functionality. However, this feature can be expanded for more complex systems. For instance, we can create multiple data stores and let users categorize posts into different stores according to their preferences. Listings with these categories can be displayed on the same or separate pages. In the case of event posts, they can divide posts that they have attended from those they want to attend. Of course, each listing linked to a different data store can pull different dynamic information from the same posts. Let me show you an example of how multiple data stores can be used. I will create a data store too and a custom query to use with it. My goal is to allow users to view a gallery of images from the post once they add those posts to the new item data store but to make the edition available only from the previous data store one. For this, I will create a new post listing that includes a carousel element to pull the images attached to the post in a gallery meta field instead of using the dynamic image element. This listing also requires a data store button connected to the current store to enable the removal of posts. For this, I'll set up after added button action to remove from the store. 
and make sure the reload listing on success toggle is enabled so that the posts are no longer displayed after the button is clicked. For the listing grid ID, I'll insert a new code that will be used later for creating the listing grid. Now I need to create functionality that allows users to add posts to the store and display those posts in this layout with multiple images. To achieve this, I'll modify the post listing that we created for Data Store 1. This listing includes a Data Store button that allows users to delete posts from this storage. I will duplicate the button to retain some styling options and change its functions. For the initial action that the button executes, I'll change the target store to Data Store 2 and update the label and icon accordingly. Additionally, I will change the after added to store action to hide button. Now I'll insert the new listing grid ID so that the listing with the gallery view where this ID will also be used is reloaded immediately upon the addition of the post. The final step in this part of the tutorial is to create the listing grid. Let's switch to editing the data store page that contains the listing grid displaying posts that user can initially select. Build another container layout with listing grid elements. For the listing grid, select to display the event gallery listing. Change the number of columns to 1. Enable the use of a custom query. Choose the relevant query. And in the style CSS settings, insert the listing grid ID we used when customizing the add to store and remove from store buttons. Now it's time to see how this two-level data storage system functions on the front end. Let's start from the initial page that allows users to add posts to their favorites. After each post is added to favorites by clicking the button below it, users can navigate to the data store page by clicking the same button, which now changes its appearance and function. Once on the store page, they can either remove posts from here or add them to another data store that appears below displaying additional images from the post. If users delete posts from this last layout, the buttons in the top listing transform back to their initial mode as well. A two-step organization of posts can be useful in many scenarios, such as when users want to learn more about events and then select specific ones to be displayed on a map or calendar layout to plan their schedule or travel routes. For detailed tutorials on creating dynamic calendar and map listing layouts, check out our previous videos on integrating Jet Engine with Bricks. Another use case is creating a lead funnel by restricting the ability to add to certain data stores exclusively to registered users. This approach encourages users to register on your website, especially when it comes to saving content on pages with permanent storage. Let me show you an example of how the data store module can motivate users to sign up. I'll create a post listing design that allows users to share their opinions about events. Instead of just one like button, there will be multiple buttons representing different reactions, similar to those on social media accompanied by a reaction counter. To implement the four reactions functionality, I need to create four data stores with the count items toggle enabled. It's important to know that this feature will not work if you select local storage as the store type. Since we won't be displaying the post in listing grids based on user reactions, there's no need to build custom queries. Now let's proceed to building a listing grid that includes the reaction buttons and their respective counts. I'll start with the initial event post listing as a base. For the first reaction, I'll use a data store button connected to the first reaction data store. Its initial function will be to add the post to the data store, while the after added action will be set to remove from the store. I won't be using labels for either action, instead I'll employ matching icons. The first will resemble an unchecked button, while the second will appear checked. Additionally, I'll enable the reload listing grid on success toggle and create a unique listing grid ID. This ID will be assigned to the listing grid, ensuring it reloads and dynamically displays the actual reaction counts. To display the number of users who have added a post to a specific data store by clicking on a reaction button, we need to utilize the dynamic text functionality. 
start by adding a heading element next to the reaction button. In the field where you would typically type the title text, click on the dynamic button icon. Then scroll down to find the jet engine store count dynamic tag for the specific store you want to display. Next, I'll make some styling customizations such as combining the reaction count and button into a single design using a div element and modifying its colors and borders. After that, I'll create four copies of this design. For each button, I will assign a different target data store, update the icons, and change dynamic text for each title element accordingly. At this point, it's challenging to visualize how our listing will appear on the front end because we only see shortcodes instead of actual reaction counts. Additionally, the design will likely change when condensed into the grid layout. However, that's not everything. Let's duplicate the block containing all the count and button elements. Here's what I want to achieve. The first block, which includes the complete functionality, will be visible only to subscribed users. In contrast, the second block will display the reaction counts but have the buttons disabled and will be visible to all unsubscribed users. For the first block, I will click the Conditions button at the top of the left settings dashboard and add a new visibility condition, ensuring it is visible only to users with the subscriber role. For the second block, I'll implement a similar modification specifying that the target user role is anyone other than subscribers. In this case, I will keep the title elements unchanged but replace the data store buttons with icons that cannot trigger any actions. Additionally, I will include a short message encouraging users to sign up for an account if they wish to share their reactions here. Finally, I will create a new page and add a listing grid element in Bricks to display the reactions listing we just worked on. Without extensive styling, let's preview the page on the front end. Since I'm currently viewing this page as an unsubscribed user, I'm unable to click the buttons to express my reactions to the posts. Now let's open a separate window where I'm logged in as a subscriber to see how the functionality works. When I'm signed in as a subscriber, I can view the reactions count from all previous users, but I also can click the reaction buttons and see the count numbers change instantly. The Jet Engine Data Store module is truly a versatile solution that can be used for a wide range of complex functionalities. Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to the Crocoblock channel if you haven't done so yet. That's all for now, stay tuned and see you next time.